sure, brother. It's fine. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I just thank you for this day, God. God, I pray that you would stop this grievous sin, God, in this nation. I pray that you'd stop this grievous murder going on here today, God. I pray that you'd have mercy and grace upon those who've already chose to do this. I pray that they, they would wrestle day and night about it, God. That you'd give them no rest about this wicked, ungodly deed, God. And I pray, God, that you would turn the hearts of men into yourself, God. I pray that you would speak through me today, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, Brother Coleman asked me to come preach the other day, and I was talking to my wife about how, uh, you know, we always got to be ready instant in season and out of season. And we got done talking in the kitchen there, and I went to my phone, and I seen he called me. So I called him back and he, he was saying, well, I'm asking you, you know, if you could come preach on Saturday. And I started laughing and I told him, no, me and my wife were just talking about being instant in season and out of season. I guess I better put my money where my mouth is and go ahead and do it. But uh, I didn't really know what to preach as, as always. I don't know what I'm going to say and I have to go to God. Uh, I take it to the Lord and he gave me some scriptures to share this morning, uh, you know, through much uh, desire and prayer to to hear from God, uh, and so I'd just like to share some of these things with you. Uh, Revelation twelve eleven is where I would like to start. It says, "And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives." unto death let me ask you something today people do you love your life do you love your life do you cherish the things of this world do you cherish the world are you a friend of the world well the bible says that the saints of god overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death you're bought with a price when you come to Jesus Christ and you've forsaken your life, you've forsaken your sin, you've given up your life, and now you've chosen a life sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that should be your life. Yes. And that should be your desire, your wanting, is to serve the Holy God of Israel, to serve Him in spirit and in truth. When Jesus Christ gave his life for you on that cross, he didn't give part of himself. He didn't give a fragment, a member of himself. He gave his whole body. And so that's what God demands from you, is to give your whole body back, is to give your life back to him and serve him with a fervency. Because if we read this book, and we believe what it says. We know about the things and the consequences for what we will get for what we've done against God. We've sinned against God. That's why we need His forgiveness. And God takes those who do not come for that forgiveness and He puts people in hell. And that's a reality that we've seemed to have gotten far away from today in Christianity. Do we really believe that there's a hell out there waiting for unrepentant sinners when they die? Do we really believe these things that the Bible says? You know, I, didn't, I got saved about two years ago now. And ever since I've been picking up this word of God and I've been reading it and I've been digesting it and I've been meditating on it and I've been chewing it and I've been been meditating day and night upon it staying in it staying close to God I see that there's a lot of professors out here but there's not a lot of doers out here in America there's not a lot of people who read this book right here and believe what it says and does what it says and that's what we need to be about as children of God. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, 
having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of, of her fornication and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. These are the words of the Bible. This is the word of God. And my friends, today you've been given a calling. If you're born again in Christ, you've been given a calling to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ unto every creature it's not just here there's about a thousand or more street corners in jackson all over this city there's broken people there's sinful people there's wicked people who are going in and they're running drugs and they're doing all sorts of ungodly things before a holy god and they need the truth of this word Amen. and we've been given a call to do his will and if you truly are born of God if you truly been born again of the Holy Spirit then my friend today something needs to be stirring in you something needs to be working in your heart down deep in the bowels of your belly and up into your heart about what you can do for God and I'm here today to tell you that you can do much for God you can do much for God my friends but we have a mouth and god has given us lungs and my friends i remember when i used to kill my lungs with cigarettes day in and day out and god has healed them now that he saved my wretched soul with his blood and purchased with me and he's given me lungs to speak his word in spirit and in truth and my friend you can do the same thing but you need faith Where's your faith at today? Do you have faith in God? Do you really believe people are going to hellfire forever if they do not turn to Jesus? Do we believe this? Do we believe that God is going to sit in the presence of sinners as they burn for eternity? Do you believe that? I know I believe every single word of this book. It's inspired of God. It's perfect without fail. And my God is perfect and His judgment is perfect. And God will execute judgment upon those who live ungodly, who are wicked who turn against his word, who twist his word as we do here in the United States today. We twist his word and we've let doctrines of devils come in here and doctrines of men have come in here and they've taken the hearts of captive men, leading them into the ditch, my friends. We need to read this Bible. We need to read this Bible. We need to make sure that the people leading us line up with this word. That the people are teaching that which lines up with this word. The everlasting gospel. When you go out to preach the word of God, yes, I'm there because I want to see sinners restored to the cross. But my number one goal is to fear God and give Him glory. Why? Because he has bought me with his blood. Yes. He 
purchased me and bought me with a price. He took a sinner who was bound in the muck and the mire of his sin, who realized he was a wretch, a devil in the sight of a holy God, and feared God because of his word. His word came forth, and his word convicted, and the man yielded unto the Spirit of God with a godly fear that worketh a repentance unto salvation, and called upon his name and faith to save his wretched soul. Amen. Is your conversion true today? When you stand out here, have you truly been converted? Have you truly been saved? The Bible says to examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self, but that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be a reprobate, my friend. Today, God gave me this also out of, why, why do we need to examine ourselves? Why do we be to be ready for this day that is coming called Judgment Day? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to read why you need to be ready for this day called Judgment Day. And it's not going to be some little day where it's all going to be fun and games. It's going to be an awful day for the wicked. And it'll be a day that will still be scary for a saint of God because he'll watch people that he knew, that he witnessed to, that he testified of Jesus Christ thrown into everlasting fire for all of eternity. Because why? Because they love their life here and they didn't choose Jesus. They didn't count the cost to choose Jesus. You need to count the cost for Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ wasn't loved by the world. Jesus Christ was despised. The Apostle Paul wasn't loved and embraced by the world. He was hated because he preached against their sin. He was hated because he went out and he testified that their works were evil. Jesus Christ said the whole world hateth me because why? Because I testify that their works were are evil. The Bible says in 1 John chapter number 5, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Do we believe these scriptures? The whole world lieth in wickedness. Do you believe it? Well, I know it's true because places like this are still open. Homosexuality, drunkenness, fornication, adultery, pornography, all these ungodly things are going on taking place before we even get to this point right here. And that's my point, my friends. It starts with you. It starts with you. God doesn't just redeem you and now it's a comfortable, luxurious life. Let's kick our feet back. Let's relax. Let's turn on the TV. Let's get the game in front of us. It's not a life of that anymore. It's a life sold out for the purpose of the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A life sold out to picking up your cross and denying yourself daily. A life sold out to taking up the cross. Onward Christian soldier in to the pit, into the gates, pushing back the gates of hell. It's a life of, it's a life of faithfulness unto God. Do you really believe that when Paul told us in Ephesians chapter number six to put on the full armor of God, that we must do that because, because we're not in a fight or because we're in a fight? Paul told us to put on the armor of God by inspiration of the Holy Spirit because you are in a fight. You've been bought with a price. If you're a Christian, you are. You are a threat to the devil in his kingdom. And you are empowered by the grace of God to go out and push back the gates of hell by the power of Jesus Christ. Do we believe this? Do we really believe what this word says? 
the Bible says in Revelation 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. And Satan bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless, bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. My friend, are you going to be there for that first resurrection? Are you going to be a part of that? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Are you going to be there, my friend? And shall go out and deceive the nations which are at the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the sand of the sea. And they went up in the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose the face of the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another other book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged 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 every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire the lake of fire now my friend do you believe that these people who are rebelling against God do you believe that the church hypocrite who's rebelling against God. Do you believe that these people who are rebelling against God will be cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity for their rebellion, for their stiff neck, for their hard-hearted pride towards God? Do you believe it? This word says it. Therefore, I believe it. I believe every word of it. My friend, I'm not saying you got to be like me, but I am saying, God, if he bought you, if you're a born-again Christian today, you're not just a Christian. It's not just a title. You're a disciple. You're a disciple first. You're a Christian second. You need to be a disciple. You need to be a follower. You need to be a doer. You need to pick up the cross. You need to sound the alarm. Because if we believe this book and that Christ is going to crack that sky and come down and judge the wicked, then we need to preach the gospel to this lost, dying generation. This nation of reprobation. This nation that's turned over to sodomy. This nation that's turned itself over to fornication and wickedness defiling these children out here trying to take their minds just like they took our minds when some of us not all of us some of us have been with the Lord 
from the very beginning, from as children, we, we trusted in the Lord. But that's not what happened to me. I went off. I tried to find pleasure in the world. I tried to be satisfied by the world. I tried to be satisfied by having sex outside of marriage and drinking from the bottle and going over and being filled up and puffed up with pride, thinking I was something in the Marine Corps. I thought I was something. I thought I was living. But my friend, I wasn't living. I was dying and going to hell. And I needed somebody to tell me about it. When's the last time you told somebody about the goodness and the severity of God? There is goodness. But my friend, you can't receive goodness unless you know you're a criminal. Oh, if I had somebody bring me the law. If I had a preacher out there in a corner come tell me to get right with God. You sinned against God. And my friend, that's what these people in Jackson need. As I go around and I, I see these people without hope. I see these people bound to sin. I see these people. They need somebody to get real with them. And my friend, it starts with you. It starts with you. You know, we're always waiting for somebody. We're always waiting for somebody to come along and lead the charge. We're always waiting on somebody. But let me tell you something. If you found Jesus, if you've been bought by Jesus, you've already found the one that can instruct you to get the job done. And you need to put your faith in that and walk in it just like Joshua the son of Nun did as he went into Israel. To capture Canaan. My friends, we need to believe this Bible. We need to do what it says. We need to believe that there's a heaven. We need to believe that there's a hell. And we need to believe that this God whom we serve, this one who saved our souls, is going to put people there if they do not repent. If they do not turn to Jesus Christ. You know Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 13. This is one of the scriptures that I remember reading when I went and picked up a Bible. And started trying to read it and understand it. And, and I was wrestling with God. And, and I remember I was reading it. It says enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in their head, because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. My friend, when I read that broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, it made me realize that I was on that way. Are you on that way today? Are you on that way today? Or are you on the straight and narrow path that leads to life? And if you're on that straight and narrow path that leads to life, which means you have life in you because you've been saved by Christ, you've received His Spirit, you have light inside of you, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But they put it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You've been given light. Don't put it under a bushel for the sake. Don't put it under the bushel for the sake of some persecution. Don't put it under a bushel for the sake of, well, he might not like the way I do it, or she might not like the way I do it, or this guy might not like the way I do it. But put it on a candlestick and shine it under these people and tell them about the king to come. 
You know, John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. I don't think John the Baptist was too concerned about what people were thinking about him. He had a message from God to deliver, and it wasn't going to stop him no matter who came in his way, no matter who stepped in his way. He was going to deliver that message no matter who got in the way of it. Because he trusted in his God. Do you trust in God? Do we believe that this can come to an end? Again, it starts with you. You know, I was talking to Brother Keith yesterday and I was asking him about what am I going to preach about? It's always good to go to counselors, safety, safety in a multitude of counselors. It's good to go to, for counsel. And I thought about how the Lord was speaking to me about Jonah and the whale. You know, what did Jonah try to do? He tried to run from his calling from God. He tried to run. But the Lord sent a whale on it. It snatched him up, right? And I believe there are Christians in this nation who are running from their calling from God. They're running from it because of fear. They're running from it because they're scared. My friend, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to fear. You need to fear God. You need to do what He says. And you stop trying to run from the calling that God has upon you. Stop running from what God is telling you to do. There's somebody probably out here today who's doing that. And my friend, it's time to obey God. It's time to come out of the belly of the whale. And go to that street corner, wherever it is God told you to go. And tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Do we believe what this word says? And are we going to obey it? Are we going to be faithful? It takes more than just prayer. Although prayer is very important. But it takes action. We have a whole book in the Bibles called the Acts of the Apostles and they showed us how to take action. Yeah. 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 Will you take action? Or are we going to sit back and just hope that it will go away on its own? God is looking for the young people today. God is looking for those who have been sitting on the sidelines today to stand up and to fight for him. He fought for you. He fought for you. He sent his son to die for you. We deserve hell for our sin. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to get the hell we deserve. And these people don't either. These people don't either. These people can receive mercy yes. before judgment. Amen. They can right. receive mercy before Amen. judgment. But they got to know that they're lost. Yep. They got to know that they're lost. Their sin needs to be before them so they can know that they're lost. And it starts with you. It starts with you. Will you answer the call today? Will you stand up? Will you cry aloud? Will you be that crazy radical that everybody uh, dislikes and doesn't have kind words to say about? Will you be that? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I could care less what a person has to say about me as long as I'm obeying my God and he's sitting up there and he's smiling down on me saying, that is my servant. That's who I've sent. That's who I've chosen. He's willing to stand up. I'm pleased with that. Rather than you sitting back and just being idle with your time. Wanting to do more, but not just 
trusting in God and doing it. I want you to trust in God and do it. I want you to have faith in God and do it. Because I'm going to tell you something. If God can give me faith to do it. If God can put it in something, a person like me. And he can put it in every single one of you out here today. You know, if I would have came out, you know, two years ago, if I would have had some buddy approach me, maybe even a prophet approach me and say, two years from now, you're going to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would have laughed at you and I would have told you you're crazy because that was something I could never fathom in my mind. I, most of the time, I still can't fathom in my mind I'm doing this. But I know it's Christ in me. And I know it's the spirit of God in me that's pushing me to do it. And my friends, go to God and ask Him for your help if you feel like you can. You're in a war. These things we put on each day are pieces of armor and weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Mighty through God. Do we put it on and believe it though? Are we going to put it on and believe it? Are we going to put it on and do it? Are we going to fight the good fight of faith? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. It starts with you. It starts with you. Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but no sign shall be given unto it, except the prophet Jonas. You're looking, people are always looking for a sign. They're always looking for a wonder. They're always looking for that next prophecy to come forth, my friend. But the prophet Jonas is what Jesus said that will be sent to them. And all the prophet Jonah did was warn Nivena. That's all he did. And he tried to run from his calling. God is asking for soldiers to warn Nineveh. God is asking for soldiers of the cross to stand up, to pick up the cross, to shout from the rooftops and what they hear in the ear let them preach ye upon the housetops God is looking for people to go forth and declare his glory to declare his word to preach repentance unto the people to warn the wicked to turn from their wicked ways and to turn to Jesus Christ. It starts with you. I'm going to keep saying it. Let it sink down deep today, people. It starts with you. I didn't want to give this message today. God said you're going to give it. And he said it starts with you. What will you do with that? Are we going to continue to be idle? Are we going to continue to just hope and pray? Are we going to put some feet to our prayers and do what it says? Do what this word says. Are we going to cry aloud and spare not? Are we going to be radical for Jesus? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'd rather be radical for Jesus than radical for this wicked world. Yes. Be strong and of good courage. God told Joshua, for I am with thee whithersoever thou goest. Just know that when you answer this call, that God is with you and you can trust in him. He'll give you the words to speak. He'll give you the words to say if you trust in him, if you have faith in him. So take that step out today. Take that step out today onto that rock that firm foundation and cry aloud and spare not because it starts with you. Yes.
Will you answer that call from God? Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray, God, that you'd use these words. Lord, I just I pray for each and every person out here, God. I pray that you'd work in their hearts. I pray, God, that we would understand that we can always do more. And then I would pray that we would be inspired to do more. That we would be inspired to go warn people about the judgment to come and care for souls, God. To love our neighbor is to warn them, God. I pray, God, that some of these people in here today would be stirred by this message that you would use it, Lord. And uh, they would heed the calling, God. I give you glory and praise, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord for Brother Allen. Amen. Brother Allen, I will say, I like the way you're doing it wrong. Amen. A whole lot better than the way nobody else is doing it right. Not, that's not true. Most Christians are not doing it right. Yeah. We hear all the time, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. While people are sitting on the couch. Right. Praise the Lord for people willing to go out and do it wrong. Amen. What other thought? We deserve hell. My brother Cal says frequently, jail is better than hell. That's right. <laughs> and I would say persecution is better than hell. Amen. Hunger is better Rich. than hell. Cold is better Rich. than hell. Loneliness is better than hell. Yes. Being scorned by people is better than Come hell. Come on, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anything 